Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna give you five quick tips to get your MIDI to sound more realistic within Cakewalk. All right, so before we get started, I wanna let you know that although I'm applying this to Cakewalk by BandLab, my DAW of choice, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're inhibited to only using Cakewalk by BandLab, as the tips and tricks that I'm gonna give you today are gonna to be applicable to any DAW that you should so choose to use. Okay, guys, let's jump straight into these five tips to get you a more realistic MIDI performance. Now, coming in at number one on the list, and probably this is no surprise, is a MIDI controller. Now, unless you're the type of producer that literally draws in MIDI notes, a MIDI performance generally starts with, of course, a performance. So the first step to making MIDI sound more realistic is to actually find a controller that you're comfortable making music with. I suggest doing some research and maybe making a trip down to your local music store to discover your personal preference as there are so many to choose from. Now, you could also go the non-keyboard style route. These types of controllers offer a lot of value in that they provide a different perspective. Most individuals, especially those starting out, are probably going to find that using the traditional keyboard style MIDI controller will get them up to speed with MIDI and then they can actually grow into the other areas that I've just aforementioned. Okay, hold on a minute. Before we move forward, I feel that I need to preface my next four tips by saying that the touch and the nuance of a trained performer playing a quality instrument is, in my opinion, impossible to recreate. Now, a major indication that a piano or a stringed instrument or something similar was actually created using MIDI is when the dynamics are choppy or the humanity is sort of sucked out of it. Therefore, a controller that you're comfortable playing is sort of your first line of defense in preventing your MIDI-made music from sounding overly robotic. Now, for anyone who's done any research in this area, I'm sure that you know that the market is flooded with options and it's really hard to wrap your head around which one would be best for you. So in order to make this extra easy for you, I've actually included a link in the description to some MIDI controllers that I feel are really worth taking a look at. I've included nearly every price point as well, from the starving musician to the I just sold my kidney to pay for this gear kind of producer. You'll find that link in the description down below. Okay, guys, and coming in at number two on the list is understanding our velocity. Now, one of the most useful aspects of the MIDI information that is being collected is the velocity information, meaning the harder you press down a note, the greater the velocity value is recorded. The range used is from zero to 127. So the softest touch will record a velocity of zero and the loudest will record a velocity of 127. Therefore, in terms of capturing realistic performances, velocity data cannot be overlooked. And what makes this even more powerful is that you can edit it after the fact. Personally, I find that no matter how comfortable I am with the controller that I'm using, the virtual instruments that I'm using, and even the part that I'm playing, they all tend to sound just a bit off, dynamically speaking. So being able to go back and edit the velocities note by note until the performance sounds as natural as possible is a wonderful tool to have. That said, instruments that are typically played with a lot of dynamics, such as piano or drums, often will benefit the most from editing the velocities with a closer eye. Coming in at number three on the list is learning to quantize. Arguably one of the features of MIDI that has been a blessing and a curse at the same time to musicians is quantization or the ability to digitally alter performances so that it is locked into a grid. However, it mustn't be overlooked as well. Musicians be aware though, because snapping each and every note perfectly to a grid can actually result in a musical performance that sounds as if it was almost too perfect. So bearing this in mind, I suggest using the strength function that your DAW is equipped with and quantize using a value that's less than 100%. Now, if you're really happy with the original performance, maybe a percentage of 20% will do. However, for a less rhythmically gifted musician, try a higher value, but always try to at least avoid using 100%. This ensures that some of the musical imperfections are still retained. Of course, feel free to move individual notes around randomly as well, especially when programming drums. However, remember that it's your music and only you know what you like to hear. Coming in at number four on the list is to use expression from other areas. Now, in addition to velocity and rhythm, we also have the ability to use pedals, knobs, faders, sliders, switches, you name it, to fine tune our performances. So use these to your advantage. The pitch bin and the modulation wheel are the two most common examples of functions that will allow us to breathe more life into our music. What's more is many virtual instruments also allow for relatively easy mapping of their controls. So if you want to control a filter, an oscillator, or a similar feature using actual hardware, it's going to provide yet another way to add more humanity into the mix. 
Sometimes, something as simple as even mapping an external fader to a fader within your DAW can provide excellent results in making things sound more human. The small variations in volume will make it feel as if the performance was created by a person standing in front of a microphone that was maybe moving around a little bit. And the last tip to make your MIDI sound more realistic, tip number five, is to mix your MIDI parts as if you were mixing a record. Now, many virtual instruments and sample libraries are recorded with incredible precision and attention to detail. For instance, the Hans Zimmer strings from Spitfire Audio are comprised of samples played by 344 musicians recorded using over 26 different unique microphone positions. Another one of my favorite virtual instruments is Addictive Drums 2, which consists of meticulously performed individual drum hits captured wonderfully using multiple microphones and high quality outboard equipment. The one thing that I seem to notice though is that even with the sample libraries that have been recorded with all of that juicy analog gear, the resulting sound of most of the virtual instruments actually tend to be a little bit too clean. I often find myself using some analog emulation plugins to impart some vibe back into most of those performances. With that being said, a lot of modern music is comprised of parts that are taken from these sample libraries, created via MIDI or even recorded in separate locations entirely. As a result, our tracks tend to be missing the glue that occurs when multiple musicians are in a room playing together, recording to the same piece of equipment. Now, for those of us that don't have huge rooms or multiple musicians that are playing at the same time, recording to that same piece of gear, don't fret because honestly, your plugins can help you place your tracks within the same musical context just by carefully crafting the mix to your desired sound. Okay guys, so as with anything else in life, the more you do, the better you get. So don't be discouraged if at first you feel that you're not getting any closer to the end result that you're wanting to hear. In time, it will get easier, and as your skills become more intuitive and natural, so too will your MIDI performances and ultimately every mix that they're utilized on. Okay guys, well I hope you found these five tips to get your MIDI performances to sound more realistic helpful. If you did, go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about anything that I've covered or I didn't cover, leave that in the comment section down below. I answer every single comment. We also are still going live every Saturday for Sound It By Saturday. So if you have a question, you can hop on live and ask it there. And of course, as usual, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon so that every time I do go live or I upload a new tutorial, you'll be the first to know. Until next time, remember we can dream alone and we can create alone, but together we can achieve so much more.